All right, welcome back to SF Vortex. We are in the war room, and we'd like to welcome aboard Anthony Ferrante, freelance writer and critic for a number of sci-fi genre magazines. And Anthony also just directed his latest short film entitled God Talk. All right, and Jay Bonanzinga is here, author of The Killer's Game, a book on the development fast track over at New Line. You can explain that fast track talk a little bit later on. It's Jay. not as fast as you may think. Okay. <laughs> and also, Mick Garris is here, director of The Stand and Quicksilver Highway, which I recently viewed and loved, and the most recent incarnation of The Shining on ABC. Guys, welcome. Thank you. Let me get to my first topic. Happening. Let's get right to the action. Okay, you got Invasion, The Shining, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, The Odyssey. Why so many sci-fi miniseries based on books recently, Jay? Scope. I think science fiction and fantasy, they have the scope that you need for a miniseries. I think that's the key, basically, of what's going to make a great miniseries. It's like a very epic story, and science fiction often explores that Scope. Area. That's the no, word. Scope. I think, I think also not the mouthwash. Scope. Right. Okay. okay. Anthony, what do you think? Do you agree? Well, I, I agree, and I also think because uh, computer-generated effects become so easy and cheaper to do, on, on TV, I mean, you got Hercules and Xena doing monsters that before would cost so tons when you and say tons of money. So cheap and easy to do is just like sellout. Well, no, not no, no, not a sellout. <laughs> Elaborate no. on okay, this. Okay, no, please. okay. Well, you know, we're like uh, let's go back to the let's go to the Shining, the topiary creatures, which uh, you know they couldn't do for the, the Shining, the movie. Mm -hmm. They were able to do because CG now can create things that you couldn't create before. And I think that's something that's very important because, like the Odyssey, I mean, you've got all this epic stuff. You couldn't do this without spending, like, you know, a couple hundred million dollars. Now you can do it for, you know, 20 or 40 or however much that, that costs. Mick Garris, you may know a thing or two about this whole miniseries thing. What do you think? Uh, I think it's not as inexpensive to make those effects as, as you might imagine. We spent about a million and a half dollars just on digital effects in The Shining, which was not wow. a heavily effects oriented show. The stand, we didn't even spend that much, uh, and it was more limited. But I think maybe something has to do with the stand because it's like the most watched miniseries of the last 12 years or right. something. And, uh, and who directed it? Uh, oh, that's right. Okay. My evil twin. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, but can, can the miniseries really, Jay, can it really do the book justice? Oh, my God. Tough to me to answer this. That's um, right. Actually, I think. It's very tricky, especially to do a book like The Shining, which is not necessarily an epic book in scope. It's very claustrophobic and small and internal. That's what makes it so hard to make a miniseries out of The Shining. And um, although, you know, you know, uh, a valid uh, attempt, um, I had a problem with the with the miniseries because it did go small. It seemed like it started out small and then it went within. And by the end, it's almost like the, the haunted house and the whole premise, were, it, it, it was almost a MacGuffin. And what you guys were really, and you can answer me yeah. if, you, if, no, no, if I, I'm I, wrong about this. Yeah, it's almost like you, you, were, you were totally I, interested, completely well, interested in the, in the relationship. I Do you agree or disagree with what he's saying? I can't agree or disagree with an opinion, but yeah. uh, I, I can say yeah, that what can. we were going for. <laughs> it's no, the war room. Yes, yeah. you can. Uh, Gentlemen, no fighting in the war room. <laughs> but I won't. Um, but I, I do feel that the best way to adapt a novel that lends itself to cinematic adaptation is by a miniseries, because the whole point is to wind the clock, to learn who those people are, to understand what motivates them, where they're going, uh, and, and The Shining, I think, is a great example of that. That first two hours is certainly slower than the second and third night's uh, installments, but it's what Steve Weber referred to as winding the clock, and I think that's a great term for it. By you the way, he was outstanding, I thought. In there, yeah, there, there, there's Weber character stuff, though, that you can get away with on miniseries that you can't get away with on film. Such as? Well, there, there's a scene in The Shining where um, Rebecca de Mornay and Stephen Weber sit and talk for like a whole act. It's like, you know, just in one room, and it's one of the most amazing things I've seen on, on done on television in that mm -hmm. it's all this character stuff and all these emotions. You can't do that in a movie. You can't television's do that in a two-hour movie. Television's intimate, and I think you have an audience that's willing to spend the time because they do it on a weekly basis right. with their favorite series mm -hmm. to go three or four nights uh, with people that they care about. And you get great actors for these miniseries too, as opposed to like maybe a TV movie you're stuck with Tori Spelling or something like that. Let's Here you go got ahead. Rebecca let's Tori Spelling. Okay, you know, our viewers have been very outspoken about the, the shiny miniseries. Let's look, at, let's, let's look at a few letters here, shall we? Now, yes. Kira McDee writes, as wonderful as King's novels are, they are rarely made into good movies. Well, 
And Patrick D. writes, all these Ds, Patrick D. writes, I've seen the miniseries and the movie version. I think the movie was much better. How do you feel you, you hear a letter like that, Mick? Well, he saw the movie and thought it was better. Good. Yeah. There are a lot of people who like the miniseries better. There are people who... I, I kind of resent that everyone wants to turn it into a competition. Right. I wasn't sitting there every day going, how am I going to outfox Stanley Kubrick? Right. Yeah, but, I'm a don't, huge don't Kubrick think, how, fan. How can you avoid, I mean, I, I agree with you emotionally, I would feel exactly the same way, but how can you avoid, you know, like you're, you're remaking Stagecoach. You're rem I personally think it's a classic well, of the I'm genre. Well, I'm not remaking I mean, his movie. No, but I, I know, but you're, you're making the book. Right. You're making the book, but personally, I, I'm an, I write books and I'm not sure that's what adapting is all about, is making a book. I think well, it's... No, look, I think, look at the thing. Could, look at yeah. the thing. The, the, who, who goes there? Was the, was the Campbell? Was it Campbell? Yeah, who, who yeah. Campbell. Sorry. Was, the, the, origi the, origi example. the original movie uh, was, was great from the 50s. It was a great Howard Hawks film. Mm -hmm. But I think John Carpenter nailed that movie, and I think The Thing yeah. stands one of the best horror films of the, of the 80s. It is fantastic. Yeah. And he's able to do more with that, that story that you couldn't do maybe back in the 50s. And every medium ha affords its own uh, pluses and minuses. And you know, because of the time between the 50s and the 80s, you got to do more stuff um, with monsters Carpenter's and stuff. Carpenter's film was very different from but, but, but it was shining. Too. It's like I mean, a mini-series versus a theatrical it, movie. The, the art of adapting is, is adapting. Well, books aren't me. movies. I, mean, I agree with you. Books are not movies. Movies, but some books like The Shining, like The Stand, are cinematic. Books. I totally agree with you on The Stand. I mean, this is—I think this is a, where we agree to disagree. Is The Stand works in the miniseries format because of the scope? I mean, not to sound like a broken record. I sound like a broken record. Yeah, the Sorry. scope thing is coming up here. I know. It's, I need some mouthwash or something. <laughs> but no, you get that mouthwash, I and I gotta take a break. Don't go anywhere, folks. When SF Vortex continues, there's lots more in the war room. Don't you think about changing that channel? We'll see you in a minute. Why was Jack Torrance so upset with wife Wendy? She forgot to order the Sci-Fi Channel. We're still in the war room, folks, with SF critic Anthony Ferrante, director Mick Garris, and author Jay Bonanzinga. Let's get to my next topic. Let, you know what? Let's do one more letter, shall we? Let's show. Okay, you're yes. a big letter guy. You might I love these. letters. Okay. Man of letters. <laughs> Viewer Jose de Geis writes, I find Stephen King's work to be almost impossible to translate accurately into the visual format. The fear in his book starts in the head and is then expressed physically. Kind of an interesting point, Jay. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I agree with it. I, I, in, a, I, in a way, I do agree with it. It's like I've always thought the reason that Stephen King's hard to translate are the parentheses. Stephen King has this wonderful, almost patented thing he does where the character, terrible things are happening, and then there's these awesome, you know, uh, weird creepy uh, thoughts and signals and stuff in parentheses, parenthetical things, or in italics, and it just like jars you, and that is untranslatable to film. You can't well, film that's a filmmaker's job, is to try to translate that, and uh, the, the Dead Zone, I thought, was a brilliant movie that David Cronenberg directed. Misery. Steven. Misery was a terrific but one. But did it get Carrie his voice? Was Absolutely. It, I don't think but, but so. But it's not necessarily no, about no. a voice, though. Because the you're Dead never, Zone? You're ne you're ne oh, no, the dead, oh. the dead Zone, though, is a, you know, you have to create certain things in movies that you can't create in books. And books aren't movies. Yes, books exactly. Books are internal. Movies you know, are external. Think, you have to well, externalize the internal. You know, Misery, you're reading oh, exactly. over the that's, course that's, of, like, what? That's where the art comes from. But people are wondering why they can't capture Stephen King's voice. And... I think the reason is part, the, a huge part of his voice is the internal stuff in of his books. Of course it is. Of Did you capture his voice? Which is well, that's not for me to say. That's for everyone <laughs> else to say. Uh, um, well, I think he did. Guys, what do you think? I think he did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Let me ask you. What's Jay's a little I'm, oh, I'm not I sure. Have, I'm not sure anybody yeah. has. No. I'm, not, I'm sure it's, I think it's hard. I don't think Kubrick did. I think Kubrick's film was brilliant. But I, I'm not sure Kubrick did either. What's it yeah. like having Stephen King hanging around? I mean, was he around? Was uh, absolutely. He, uh, it's I mean, the greatest thing you could possibly hope to have if you're ad uh, adapting his work. Right. Uh, when you have him around for the support and to bounce ideas off of him, he's incredibly co collaborative and a really terrific human being in addition to being a wonderful artist and a pulp artist as well. 
but uh, to have him and to be able to go to him and trade ideas, is, what more could you want? I don't think any, with any, any novels, I mean, even Dean Koontz, I think Dean Koontz has had one of the hardest times of having anything translated into a film that's been scary or anything, but his books are phenomenal. But why haven't they been translated? What's the problem? Well, because a lot of times it's hack filmmakers putting them together, you know, it's like, you know, really low budgets and they Watcher don't catch seven. it. Watcher 7. Watcher 7. I mean, Watcher is one of the most brilliant books. If someone would have taken that book and made a big budget movie out of it, that's a movie that needs to be made into a miniseries. That is an incredible book it would have been ratings hit people would have captured his voice it would have been wonderful but can you please everybody in a situation no. like no. that I mean, well, why would you want to yeah. why right. would anyone want to i mean well, i'd like to but okay I'm oh, sorry. I, I wouldn't want to because <laughs> it would mean i had had dove into that pit of mediocrity that would have to we, level off no ups no bottoms just right down the middle you have to have your own right. voice you're the filmmaker that's so what, you need to bring exactly what you want to bring what to kubrick it. did. Yeah. it's exactly yeah. what kubrick did exactly he didn't and and i i just don't understand why Stephen King keeps on saying that Kubrick doesn't understand horror. I've heard him say that more than once, and it, it just seems odd because Kubrick maybe went in a completely different direction. Well, look, Steve, which is which is the purview of the of the filmmaker, don't you think? Steve King was fairly new uh, to Hollywood when The Shining was made. That was made in 1979, uh, and so it it really left out so much of what his book was about. The book is about alcoholism. It's about parental responsibility things that he knows about deeply and affect his life very deeply. And to leave those key elements out had to hurt, had to be really mm, painful a, as an it, artist and as a human being. He, and I, so he doesn't feel as strongly now as he did then, and he's not talking about it now for a number of reasons. Okay, real quick, before we get out of here, i got about a minute left. Now, which King novel that has not yet to be a movie should be a movie? Jay? I've always wanted to see the untranslatable Gerald's Game because it's almost a single character play. Me too. Done. And I understand. Yeah, Steve and I just started talking about that yesterday. And uh, Desperation, uh, his latest book. Oh, that'd and, be great. Uh, cool. I, Green Anthony? Mile. Green Mile. It's a thing he did last year, the uh, monthly series of Frank Darabont's writing and directing it. Ditto. The Shawshank great Redemption. Book. Ditto. Amazing. It'll be a great uh, movie. What's Absolutely. even more amazing is the fact that we're we're, we're out of time and we're all Aww. green on our last Aww. subject. That's Aww. pretty amazing Aww. right there. I got to get out of here. I want to thank Mick Garris, Anthony Ferrante, and Jay Bonazinga. Guys, we come back sometime? Sure thing. Of course. Great. great. You at home, don't go anywhere. There's lots more in the Vortex when we return. Thank you.